Hello and welcome everyone to e Exchange for Media's D2C Revolution. We are in conversation with Romita Mazumdar, founder of Foxtail Skincare. Hi Romita, how are you doing? I am great. How are you? I'm good as well. I would love to dive right in and I can see the craze around the colorful products and the bottles that come around uh, with Foxtail. Uh, how has the journey been so far for the brand? Being just a two-year-old brand, what have you seen this far? Consumer behavior changes, challenges, what do you think? Uh, the journey has been nothing short of giving a feeling that we're extremely grateful. We are grateful to the customers. We are grateful to the to all the love we've gotten. And most importantly, I think I'm very grateful to the team. We worked extremely hard uh, to get things right and do right by the consumer. Uh, see, I think uh, BPC and I think consumer in general is at a very interesting phase. Uh, as over the last five, seven years, we've been exposed to, you know, a uh, higher amount of learning, social media, while uh, we can keep talking about trolls and all the negative things, I think what social media and the world of digital media has done, it's exposed us to what's happening across the world. And what that has meant is that our needs and desires have grown at an accelerated rate, right? Now, one is that. Second, India is, an as an economy, doing really well. Uh, and as consequence of a good economy is that consumers are benefiting from it. So you have higher per capita income, which is dispensable. So I think consumer as a whole, everyone... I keep hearing that this is the golden decade for India but I can tell you as an executional as a business person that I really see a lot of aspiration I really see a lot of educated customers and when I say educated I'm not talking about literacy per se but I'm talking about educated about what they want how they want it having higher sense of self-awareness about the life they want to build products that fit into that life etc uh, and uh, that is making our story very interesting a lot more challenging because today you can't just tell a user ye lo, aapko ye use karna hai. a user knows what she wants uh, and she's very clear what works what what doesn't work so honesty is something that has come at the peak of it i think what today users are really rewarding is honesty they're rewarding transparency the amount of consumer maturity it's not like you do something wrong and the consumer is like oh you're the worst consumers are also giving you space saying that oh you're a young brand you can do things wrong but at the end of the day how agile are you in making it correct so we are in this beautiful economy today which is giving us the power to spend but most importantly we are at an era where we know who we are where we are trying to strive very hard to become who we want to be and accordingly the other consumer categories are fitting into it and I think BPC is one of the most personal categories if you look at it for a, a, a not only women today for even men it's a very personal choice what you put on your skin how you put how what do you want to look like etc so it's fitting into the story of uh, it has to fit into very honestly the story of who the Indian consumer wants to be today and how she wants to be perceived and that honesty has become the crux of it so what is the biggest challenge is honestly being truthful to the user today is not just the language or a lingo it is a necessity so being truthful to the user is what makes our job easier because we started as users uh, we started because we felt like people are not being truthful in the category as users when we were users of this category before launching the brand and i think because that's the dna that also makes it very easy for us uh, but at the same time with every new product repeating that truthfulness repeating that honesty uh, with every new campaign repeating that truthfulness and honesty so i'll tell you one of the things right we launched an hydra sunscreen which is like a foundation come sunscreen and there, there are three shades, shade one, two, three. So usually in any company, makeup brand, you go shade one is the lightest, shade three is the darkest. And we said, why? So we exchange it. Shade three is the lightest for us and shade one is the darkest shade for us. And uh, if you go offline, a lot of people still get sometimes confused. They, they will get the wrong one and then they will say the brand's not done right. It took me one month to correct that saying that. And now I, I went through a month where people complained about it to the month that I get a lot of positive feedback that, you know, this is not just saying you're inclusive. This is like such a niche thing, like shade three, two, one, uh, right? Uh, why should one always be the lightest, right? You always know number one and number two, like, you know, there's always a connotation to it. So I suddenly yesterday was seeing going to my social media reviews and people started noticing it saying that, you know, they've done opposite of, um, what the market trade is they took a risk at their business because pe they knew that people could have easily you know confused for it and that would lead to negative feedback uh but i very quickly the consumer realized that you know they just practicing what they say and then they also appreciated us for that so yeah uh, i think being truthful to the user is the biggest challenge and the biggest benefit and strength that we also end up experiencing 
very i mean intriguing that i never knew this foundation thing that you just told me it's very interesting to see that uh, somebody is redefining the game uh, yeah. also coming to the definition where uh, the vegan cruelty free topic as a whole has been overused and overexposed now i'll be honest i'll share my own opinion uh, when i google a cosmetic and i say i want to buy vegan and cruelty free product the next minute instagram loads me with so many brands which i have not heard of uh, which are new which are better which are giving me a uh, cruelty free and vegan free and gluten free and i don't know what all i'm not sure there are so many terms at this moment that i'm not even sure i'm mixing up food and cosmetic maybe so <laughs> how do you redefine how do you differentiate your business when the word that you're playing on is already overexposed see uh uh chenny i'll tell you i and we very firmly believe that we actually never try to pitch ourselves as vegan we are vegan we are cruelty free we don't test on animals uh, uh we don't use majority of the ingredients in the world unless they pass a safety test so we only use ones that are approved by the eu etc so there's a lot of testing that we do and lot of uh we don't never use something that is allergic or every fragrance is allergen free uh, and there are only close double digit fragrances in the world that are allergen free so it's not like my world is huge so it also restricts and makes the problem to be solved more complicated but i told my team when i started off and i still tell it like when i talk to investors or when someone's asking me what have you guys done right yet agar khana saaf hoga and i'm talking in hindi you are not going to tell someone oh the food is clean you can eat it it has to be clean it's the most obvious thing uh you are not going to be like i washed the vegetables and made it it has to be washed and given it now uh, if you are go to a vegetarian house you are not going to say oh animals there are no animals on the plate there are only vegetarian it has to be it so i think as a user again like going back to the fact that it started as a user i think today vegan cruelty free is a necessity it's not a pitch i think if you are not vegan cruelty free then it becomes a problem and i don't think it's also such a great task that i'm doing that i'm going to go and pitch my users that hey i'm vegan cruelty free i want my users to know that these guys are doing every basic thing to be conscious of the environment conscious of what the user wants conscious of what sensitivity uh, different users can have and when she doesn't think about it then what she starts thinking about okay why am i using see you are not using skincare because it's vegan you are using skincare because there's a benefit you want right pigmentation dark circles etc 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 whatever is the benefit but if you start worrying about us being uh, us doing the basic things right then i'm not doing the right job as a brand so i always say that while we are vegan we are cruelty free we are all of these um, we meet a lot of safety standards which are much higher than a lot of uh, uh, brands that i have used previously right and we are very conscious of it and very particular about it but i don't like talking about it or i honestly never pitch it you will see on my website there's one place and it's not like it's gotten a huge you don't go to my home page and you will see vegan cruelty free brand i'm a brand that delivers result and i want you to know and i want you to trust like it's like going to your mom right you know when you go to your mom's kitchen you're going to get your basic taste right you're not going to worry about namak zyada namak kam right uh, you might not like the vegetable she makes but you know that the taste is going to be primarily right brands have to do that and i think we have we firmly believe that that's not my pitch that's my that's my obligation that's my moral duty to give you something that's vegan something that's cruelty free my pitch to you is always about the result you will get beyond it and i think it's true yeah now users i don't think today there is only a set of users looking for cruelty free or vegan or paraben free etc or sulfur free in fact we launched an anti acne face wash and there are i'm not saying there aren't anti acne face wash in the market but nothing was truly sulfate free this was truly sulfate free right and you will there are different uh, derivations of it that people started using but it was not truly sulfate free so it took me a year and a half to make a truly sulfate free anti acne face wash because sulfate isliye hota hai taki and sul sulfate isliye hota hai because it makes this it foams so people feel like it's using so i had to solve for foam but i'd also made it truly sulfate free right so i don't say just sulfate but you will go and look at my anti acne face so it's my pitch is not it's sulfate free because everyone's pitching that even if they are not doing it so mera to mera hai that you need to you you need to know that we are this and that's my moral ab- obligation that's not something unique and such a big thing i'm doing i think that's the basic thing i have to get right before i start solving for anything big correct makes sense i really like the way you put it across uh, especially with the mom's food example of course that's very correct 
Um, also moving ahead, what are your offline expansion plans? Are you already out there or it's on the cards? Yeah. What, what do you think yeah. about it? Uh, yeah. So we are across 10 cities in India. Uh, okay. uh, we are in a combination of general trade stores. We are mostly in general trade stores. Uh, a combination of BA, beauty assisted stores and uh, non-BA, non-beauty assisted stores. Uh, see, uh, again, I think online, we have built a profitable business online. So it's not like today, a lot of times offline happens because online, and I'm primarily my website. So it's not that... Uh, uh, people usually marketplaces ends up becoming a big thing big channel for them but then you worry that you know if i'm so dependent on one marketplace what if they increase their margins etc so you take a hit on profitability we are primarily our website and we are profitable so that's not a worry that i end up i have to have uh and we are growing uh touch wood quite fast quite well there but i think uh but market but i think marketplace and offline are both where my users is see there was a time where i prioritized my website is because i wanted to learn from the user on the website i know what the user is buying what is she liking what is she not liking so there's a lot of learning i got right and it is very critical whenever you start something you need to learn you can never hit it right maybe you'll be lucky and hit it right on two things but you will most likely have a learning curve on two three other things right so that's something that we took that one year now i'm not just solving for what i am learning i have to solve for okay my user has tried me there are so many x number of users who know about me but they are going and telling their families they are going and talking about us so i have to be where the user is sometimes it's also inconvenient for the user to buy one product from a website and two three other products from a marketplace if she's on any of the marketplaces, Amazon, Nika, she's not only able to buy my products, she's able to buy multiple other things together. So she's able to solve for a multi-card. So we are prioritizing that also. Offline for me uh, is the most, was always something that I had to crack, wanted to crack. I'll tell you why is because as much as we think that we all are shopping online, uh, majority of the Indian market is still offline led, right? Uh, I totally agree. Uh, yeah skincare, color, cosmetics, etc. You know, uh, it's easy for me to want my user to trust karo mujh pe, but unless you try the product, how do you trust, right? Uh, so I'm thinking that now we've reached a scale that we are expanding to that part of India, which doesn't necessarily has the, have the highest trust in online. It's not like she doesn't shop. She might be shopping the second time online, but uh, trust building has to happen. And trust building happens when you can touch the product, when you can see the product, when you can try it. And I think that's what for me offline is being where you are, no matter you're going out and going to buy something, I want to be there. Uh, um, and that's really true FMCG. Uh, FMCG is where you go to buy a Pepsodent, yet you can see a skincare, you can see a color cosmetics. That's true FMCG, right? And uh, uh, I we always that way if you look at a packaging it's colorful there's a reason it's colorful i wanted i didn't want to be a black and white thing on the shelf i wanted you to see uh, what those are and each product stands for a different color because each product stands for a different story or different problem solution so uh offline is gonna be big for us in terms of expansion in terms of uh, penetration but having said that marketplaces and websites will continue marketplaces is also a priority we built a team this way that we can prioritize on all three things versus choose one over the other. Uh, we are lucky that we don't have to substitute growth for one over the other. It's not that one is not growing, so I'm growing on that. I think we are expanding so rapidly because all three are growing at the pace that they are. Uh, and uh, yeah, so offline, you will see us do quite a bit now. Amazing, sounds good. Also, I read somewhere that 25%, uh, I guess, of your revenue goes to the marketing budget, if I'm not wrong, something of that sort. Yeah. Yeah, so... You I mean, that's your preparation and come. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, how is it like? Uh, what is the media mix and what is the what is the marketing mix that you follow? Where does that twenty five percent in different channels go? And what is the most profitable for you? The ROI is the highest on which platform? Uh so I'll tell you. We see marketing. Me. Uh, what we do is innovative. How we do it is innovative. The channels by itself, I think, for every brand is muta muti the same. Uh, the marketing budget goes into performance marketing, which is your meta and Google of the world. It goes into marketplaces like Amazon, Nika, Flipkart. They also have perf, they also have display banners, etc. It goes into influencers, content creators, etc. Uh, influencers who are uh, posting about us, talking about us. They, we partner with a lot of brand ambassador kind of uh, 
profiles uh it goes into that uh and primarily it is these three there is always a little that goes into affiliate channels etc uh but primarily the majority of the budget ends up being these three uh my roi is highest uh are, we are a profitable channel across channels right website marketplaces and offline uh so for me it is very hard to pick one and what also ends up happening between the channels themselves and wherever ROI is taking ahead, we are able to prioritize the other because profitability is something we take very seriously. We never compromise on it. Uh, like I'll tell you, on the start of the month when we decide on the cost, no matter what the revenue target meet or any cost structure never changes. We never increase it. We always, in fact, end up underspending versus spending more. And the team will never come and say, Ki, Are revenue target nahi mil raha, do lakh extra de. That is never a conversation that we have. You have to meet your revenue target at the same cost. Now, how the channels interplay with each other is always a question. But yeah, I don't think that I can choose one over the other. I think each of them built TOF, something leads to BOF creation, etc. So I also don't think it's right to think of um, ROI that way. For example, if you have an ad on an influencer talks about you, let's say, but you see an Instagram ad and convert it, uh, convert, end up converting on it. So it will look like your performance marketing has very great ROI, but an influencer also has a role to play and vice versa. So, you know, uh, the reality is that marketing, digital marketing by itself is a very interplay with each other quite a bit because it's the same user who's seeing you with an influencer who's seeing you on Nike and then seeing you on Instagram ad. So what leads to the final conversion is always very difficult and tricky to say. So hence, I don't, I'll not get into ROI definition because it will not be fair for these channels. For us, all of them are equally important and all of them touch would have worked well for us so yeah sounds good also uh as far as i could see foxtail's website and stuff i did not find a very uh famous face attached to the brand and it majorly banks upon influencer marketing as of what you said right so this is what i'm asking yeah. this is what i wonder about d2c brands that uh is establishing a business without a celebrity endorsement today tougher or easier and is influencer marketing a total 100% alternate to it how do you think about that influencer marketing versus celebrity endorsement see the reason we have not done celebrity endorsement other than the fact that they are a lot more expensive lot of fewer course. day a lot more cost into production and i think we have not had the bandwidth or let's say the necessary need that we invest because you know for you will invest that kind of money and if your revenue has to make sense to invest that kind of money. Right. But uh, it's not just been a business and a number let call. It's also been the realities. I'm not against celebrity or I'm not like, oh, why? do we not think about it? Of course, we think about it. But, you know, I don't want to do a celebrity endorsement just to access someone's reach. She has so many followers. She's such yes. a big star. I want it to reflect Foxtel's personality, right? See, I am not Kylie Kardashian or Kim Kardashian or, you know, mm -hmm. like Hailey Bieber that I will launch a brand and people end up using it because they'll be like, who, like, you know, people know me as a businesswoman. People know me as my, for my financial background. People know me for building Foxtel, but it's not for my, uh, so I think what leverage, and I think it's a huge leverage that stars have, they are known for their personalities, right? They're known for uh, what they stand for. It's beyond movies, right? Today, if you talk of celebrities, it's not. And the reason some endorsements work great when it comes to celebrities is when the pers their personality and the brand talks to each other. I don't think I've been able to identify which celebrity and Foxtails, what is which celebrity's personality aligns with what Foxtail stands for. And I think I'll do real injustice to Foxtail if that marriage doesn't happen quickly because it's easy. See, I can get someone, I will pay someone and I will, all of that is fine, right? But I think when this, I also, I, I have not worked with celebrities. I really, but I don't think basis the interviews I hear and stories I hear that if the personality aligns with the brand, they also have a real connect and love for the brand, right? Uh, it is not just a transactional thing. So I think I don't want to get into a pure transactional relationship with the celebrity because then she becomes the face of the brand, right? And uh, it's as good as, you know, like today, today, 
I, I can't say I'm the face of the brand. I think I am the voice of the brand. I think uh, I have people like Meher. I have some some very strong, uh, you know, content creators who are upfront talking about the brand, etc. Right? Meher is are one of the founding members, and she talks about the brand quite. I, and she goes to a lot of places, and people ask, "Are you the founder?" Uh, the reason being that her personality aligns with what Foxtail stands for, right? And so what people feel when they use the product, look at the website, and what they feel when she talks quite aligns quite a bit. Um, and that's the personality that people look up to. So I think for a celebrity, it's a much more magnanimous personality, right? It's a very well-defined. It's not that she's going to partner with me and suddenly I will influence her. Her personality in the market, in the audience's head is well-defined. So her personalities will influence pe how people view Foxtail versus uh, vice versa. And hence, it's very critical. It's the right person who's coming and becoming the face and I haven't found that yet I try to think about it and people have asked me who would it be uh, I have a few names in mind but honestly uh, I'd not reached the stage where I would love anytime my partner I would be having conversations I would want to understand who she is I would want to know how my user sees her etc that's one to your second question is influencer versus celebrity uh, yeah whether one displaces other, I don't know and I don't think so. I think influencers have, you know, I think we are doing a disservice to influencers by thinking that, uh, and I generally think this, that thinking that they are just creating content. I think what they are known for and what people respect them is for the intelligence of the category that they develop, right? And that's not necessarily true for stars. Stars are known for their personalities, right? What they stand for. I think influencers are known for the intelligence of the category, right? Uh, uh, their prof stars for profession is acting. Their intelligence is in acting and identifying the right script, identifying the right uh, uh, audience and films and everything. Content creators' ka intelligence is the everyday intelligence about the category they pick. Uh, uh, you talk about any influencer. If she's a comic, her intelligence is in the comic relief that she is giving, right? If you talk about a skincare influencer, his intelligence is about the skin type, etc. Like today, she can function almost like a dermat, but not a dermat, but almost that, like that, right? So I think uh, to me, the reason to collaborate with the two are very separate. Um, when I collaborate with an influencer, I collaborate because she's a key opinion leader. I collaborate because she can execute on a, I want to collaborate because I want people, want her opinion about me. In fact, we are one of the, we're the first brand to do lab trials. Now we've not, we should do it again as we used to send before a launch product to influencers. And we used to say, you give whatever opinion you want, even bad, it's fine. You give that opinion to us. So I care about her opinion about my products. I can, and because, and people care about her opinion about the product, right? So I think uh, uh, intelligence about a category and star value, uh, uh, and I know today a lot of content creators have a lot of star value, et cetera, but the reality is they've gotten that star value through intelligence in the category, right? Now, today, a lot of entrepreneurs have star value, right? Uh, but the reality is the reason they have star value and well-deserved star value is because they have intelligence about the category, their profession, right? So I think the reason for that star value is very different. Uh, and hence, is very, and hence I don't think one displaces the other. I think as a brand, we will always be working with content creators because we love them. I think we've... Uh, have a very good relationship with them. I think we uh, respect them a lot as when we make products as users. Uh, while I'm making a skincare brand, when it comes to travel, I look at some other influencers. And when it comes to something, hair care, I look at some other influencers. And stars, collaborating with stars, actors, actresses, I think that's a very different reason is because I would want to want her personality to rub off on hers. That's brand creation versus this is more like creating uh product trust product credibility etc yeah perfect i think you just covered all the length and breadth of everything that i wanted to hear thank you so much the last question what do we see foxtail doing in the coming fiscal year what are the plans grow 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 profitably grow profitably grow profitably and uh, uh we've already established ourselves in the channels website is already there marketplaces you it already there offline is already there it's not something that i'm suddenly going to open up a new channel you will see us going deeper into each channels uh which is where both the growth and profitability context comes in uh you will see us launch a few more products roughly seven eight products in the coming year which i'm very excited about i think some of the products are 
truly outstanding. Uh, uh, next, early next year, you will see us uh, flirt with something new. Uh, and I'll talk about it closer to that time. But that's, again, very interesting. That's going to come up. Uh, you will see us... Uh, 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 you know, we are a brand that was built by users from day zero to day now. We what product to make our users tell us, uh, whether to launch a product our users tell us. After launching, whether the product is good or not or bad, we go back, then we redo the product, then send it to the users who said this is bad. And then once they validate, we again launch it. So yeah, our, um, the only thing that keeps us going is users. And I think we are constantly thinking of how to integrate that more, how to be more available to us, whether it's from a sales point, point whether it's just from a feedback point, point, whether it is just from having fun standpoint. We love... We did one huge lab trial in the last year, October, uh, and uh, which was, you know, headlined uh, uh, by Riyadh Kapoor. But we just did a huge experimental lab that we had created where people could come and try the products and test if they are working. And it was just a party. It was a party and we loved having fun with them, dancing with them, having a good time with them. So I think uh, um, it's just in one way or the other, we are constantly trying to solve for her, the users or trying to talk to her or trying to be with her or be around her to learn from her, right? So I think you will just see us do more of it, whether it's on product, whether it's on sales, whether it's on operations. Uh, and yeah, so I don't have any fancy uh, answer for you, but deeper penetration into current channels, uh, uh, engaging with our users more in any format uh, and uh, yeah, doing right by the users by launching the right products, which I think some of the products being launched are outstanding. So yeah, that's it. Sounds good. Uh, also, this question I should have asked first, but uh, probably I'll edit it and put it first. Why yeah. the name Foxtail? What does it mean? <laughs> uh so the name foxtail uh uh so i was doing before i started foxtail right uh i knew i wanted to do something in skincare but i was like rose ne brand launch the coffee popular the every brand comes out with coffee green apple popular the everyone comes out with green apple so mm -hmm. what is but the when that's happening it's like you know i i'm sure you would have gone through, i'm 100 percent sure you would have you know we go to a store we buy a new product yeah online order do three bar use karke usko chhod de de de. and yes. then we end up ordering in <laughs> So there's something that's wrong right? it's easy to acquire users today but very difficult to retain them so i said let me go and talk to the users what's happening right i mean is it just me who's feeling this very strongly or is it yes so i interviewed a lot of women in fact i interviewed 937 937 women at that time it was four months of a lot of conversations and not all i mean my airport ke bahar ya mall ke bahar khareo ke baat hoti they used to be like ye kaun hai some people used to be very nice and kind some people were like ye kaun like why should we answer your questions but either way i think that was a period when i was really searching for a name i was like you know i'm doing it alone i don't even know if i'm going to do it and doing your full-time job and Saturday, Sunday doing it. I'm like, I need a name that, you know, you know, sometimes centers you. So, but I couldn't find a name. I went through so many, all of that stuff. And then there was uh, December of 2020, I'd gone to Chikmagalur. It's a resort in South India. And there are a lot of, when you go from Bangalore to Chikmagalur, there are a lot of coconut trees. Um, but uh, when we they, when we reached the resort, they started giving us a tour. And the first thing the person who was giving us the tour said, this is not coconut, this is foxtail, F-O-X-T-A-I-L. And it's the most useless plant. And that stuck with me. I was like, what do you mean by so everywhere, right? So then we went on to see coffee. It's a coffee plantation, bamboo, everything. We did a one-hour natural reserve tour. And then we went to the room and while everyone was getting ready, it stuck with me. So I Googled it up. So it's useless because the seeds are inedible. It's not like coconut tree. It's not as, if you benchmark it to coconut, it's not as useful because there is no coconut water, coconut oil, nothing can happen. The seeds are inedible. But the roots are extremely strong and hence it's planted it in mountainous areas to hold the soil together where coffee can grow. And coffee is a very important commercial driver for India. And that to me immediately reminded me of my mother because I felt like, you know, my dad's gone out to become this fancy lawyer. My brother and I have gone on to do whatever we've gone on to do. But the real fort and kind of the unsung hero, if I may say, or heroine is my mother, right? She holds the fort together for all of us to continue doing all the adventurous stuff that we are doing and i think it's true of our housewives right you can keep we all get the ceo societal accolades but they are the ones that are holding the fort and you never get to know that right uh, uh and uh then i was like but you know fox is negative right then i i love the name i think i just love the 
uh so i love the name there but uh, when i love the name then everyone was like you know people i was talking they like fox is quite negative right because hum bachpan mein aesops and fables mein padhte that it's uh, the cunning animal etc so that's when i started reading about fox fox is a very cunning animal uh, of course it's a great runner it's cunning it's a very uh, what we say chalak which is great right like chalak is not necessarily bad but yeah there's a negative connotation to it but yeah. uh, fox is a great mother fox is a very nurturing mother in the animal kingdom and the moment i started reading about her nurturing side and how great a mother and probably one of the best mothers and most nurturing mothers in the animal kingdom i fell in love with the whole persona that she has and i love the fact that she is not a sati savitri so i think we as women are constantly told like i have always been in male dominated jobs whether it was banking whether it's ca and i've had women also come and say do you not want to get married do you not want to have kids why do you work 18 hours a day right and uh, or it would be the other way right you know like so from i think women whenever they're pretty they can't be smart they're smart they're not pretty uh, yeah, if you are wearing heels then probably you're too snobbish if you are wearing chappal then probably you're too jhal. you know this constant compartmentalization and i think uh, it's time we as women say we are not sati savitri we don't want to be one yaar i can be a great alpha ceo and i can also be a great mother at home it doesn't mean that i am ambitious so i can't be a good mother and it doesn't in any way that if someone chooses to be a housewife she couldn't have excelled professionally that's her personal choice so i think respecting les and women and her personal choices uh, is what fox i think encompassed very nicely and because i was speaking to so many women one day i came and i, I my fiance and my husband i told him that you know uh, you talk to women and you really talk to women for 15 minutes about their skin you will know whether they are married or not whether the water in the house is hard water soft water uh, whether how much time they spend in the kitchen near the furnace how much time they spend in the sun stress kitna hai nahi hai so that's when we came out with the tagline i, I happened to say it um, it's like every skin has its own story it was part of the conversation but that became the tagline of the company because we really feel that every skin has its own story and unless i know your story i can't solve for your skin and uh, uh by yourself the skin tells a story right the day you are looking dull you're tired there might be like there a lot of people the day they are uh, their mood is off ya dukhi hote unka skin dull lagta hai unke aank chote ho jate hai like there's a lot of story that skin tells and unless we know that story we can't do justice to what we are doing for you and we change t a i l to t a l e so that's the name fox there it's a longer explanation but it's a company that wants to te- it's the vision was to be able to create great products for modern indian women who and respect the complexities she has not only in her life but also in her skin and be able to solve for those skin complexities so i think that was it wow i think that's the cherry on the cake to the last response of our conversation the right time to end it sweet <laughs> thank you so much for this my amazing insightful conversation and stay tuned with us everybody for upcoming episodes of d2c revolution where we decode every brand story thank you thanks jenny bye